In this rational expression, I wanna be able to show you exactly what to look out for. Because again, this is something, this is a pattern that happens over and over and over again. So if you can understand this concept that I'm gonna teach you in this video, you're gonna start seeing this pattern in multiple other examples when you're adding or subtracting rational expressions. So it's very, very important, it's very, very helpful. And you know, it's just like when you like buy a new car or like your parents, you know, you get a new car and you're driving around, and then you start seeing that car everywhere. Once you start seeing this pattern with adding and subtracting rational expressions, you're gonna see it everywhere. And that all comes into identifying the LCD. And I think a lot of students hate adding fractions or rational expressions is because we gotta get the common denominator. And one of the easiest, fastest way to find the common denominator is just to multiply your denominators, right? And that's one thing I talked about in you know previous videos. But in this example, I don't wanna find my common denominator. Right? I mean, I don't wanna multiply these out on both sides. That's gonna create a pretty messy um, rational expressions that I'm gonna need to add. But the one thing I wanna wanna do first is you know factoring. And a lot of students don't like factoring quadratics, right, trinomials. And especially if you're taking a test, sometimes you have like anxiety and stress and it's like, it's, it's taking a lot. But hopefully you guys recognize in this example that we can kind of factor this and we can factor it rather quickly. Like we both recognize that this expression, they have a three in common, so I can factor this out to a three times an x plus one. Now, here's the tip. Here's what I want you to see. A lot of times, almost all the times, whatever your factor is in one rational expression is going to be your factor in the other rational expression, right? Because if it wasn't the case, if they, if they did not share anything in common, you would have a pretty crazy rational expression to do. Again, I'm not saying every time this works, because again, sometimes you are gonna have a really difficult problem where you're gonna be multiplying multiple, multiple um, factors on both sides. But a lot of times, this x plus one is gonna show up in the factored form over here. So let's go and see if that works. Let's see if I'm correct in this case. So I need to multiply this by another factor, right? I know I'm gonna have an x. And again, remember this one times what gives me four. Well, that has to be a four, right? And then again, everything's positive. So therefore I know this is gonna be positive. And let's go and double check. Does this work out? If I multiply x times x is x squared, right? One times four is four. And then these two better add to give me a five x. X times one is one x. X times four is four x. Four x plus one x is five x. So you can see that they share this common factor. This is extremely important and helpful to recognize because the first thing you always wanna do if you recognize they don't have any common factors or they can be simplified is to factor your both expressions. But again, if you're having trouble with the factoring, then factor the easiest one first and then use that factor to help you factor your other expression. Now this one wasn't horribly hard to factor, but again, you can only imagine like if you have something where it's like a cubic or if you have a quadratic with a coefficient in front, you can use this process to help you do that. So now let's just go and finish the problem because you know finishing the problems are fun. Um, so we have an x plus one and x plus four and we have an x plus one and three. So in this case, I can say my LCD, this is gonna be the least common denominator, is gonna contain an x plus one, an x plus four and a three. Right, because again, the LCD, the important thing about the LCD is everything in your denominator has to evenly divide into that LCD. So over here, I have the x plus four and the x plus one. I just need a three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by a three on the top and the bottom. And then over here, I have a three and an x plus one. The only thing I do need is going to be an x plus four. So I'm gonna multiply by an x plus four on the top and the bottom. Now remember, the reason why I'm doing this on the top and the bottom is to produce what we call equivalent fractions, right? So that's gonna be so important. And also remember that now by multiplying those values, I have the LCD in both these fractions. So now when I go ahead and rewrite my simplified expression, what I can simply do is just rewrite it as one expression, or, write, or add my two numerators under the same LCD, which is just three times x plus one times x plus four. Um, I also can do an extra step over here. Notice over here that I'm multiplying this, I can just apply the distributive property here and then go ahead and simplify. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. Over here, I'm going to have a three plus five x times x, five x plus four all over my LCD. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the one thing you could do is rewrite this in standard form and go ahead and see if you could factor it to simplify that out. But hopefully you guys recognize that there's really nothing else that we can do to simplify an expression like this. But the idea of simplifying first as well as last is something I wanna to explain to you in the next video.